anybody tell me what this symbol means? Oh, oh, bones. Bones. Yes. Okay. So say oh, oh. oh yeah, that, that works. Can anybody tell me what this symbol means? Wi-Fi. It's <laughs> <laughs> not, so, not so good signal, right? No. Does anybody know what this symbol okay. means on their multimeter? Talking multimeters, if you haven't gathered that yet. Continuity. No. It's like oh, continuity. Right? It's, it's continuity. Goal. Yes. Okay. So we have. We know this is ohms, and we know this is continuity. Now let's draw a nice little. Does anybody know the difference between these two? So continuity is checking what? What are we checking between these two? This is ohms. This is continuity. There's a word I'm looking for here. It starts with an R. Resistance. resistance, right? Both of these are for what? Checking resistance. If you look at your multimeter, like the $43 one that I carry around with me every day, you're both on the same selection here, right here. They share the same button. Why do they share the same button? Because they're measuring resistance. It's not even the same category. Which one of these do we use for checking a grounded compressor? Oh, oh. We all in agreement with that, or is yeah. that a, that's oh, some, that sounded very questioning. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's 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 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so with the beat, there's a lot of confidence, right? When we're checking grounded compressors, we're checking grounded fan motors. Sure. Okay. So let's plot. Let's plot continuity on the scale here. So this is zero ohms, and this is fifty mega ohms. Does anybody know how many ohms is 50 mega ohms? 50. Look like a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. 50 million, 50 million ohms. Right, so we could put on here, sure, let's just, just for the sake of scale here. 50 million ohms. This is our resistance scale if you have a meter like mine. Okay, what do you think the range is for continuity on the scale? Ten thousand. Well, zero. Ten thousand. Well, let's step it back real quick. Okay, we're checking a grounded compressor, right? What resistance, at a what threshold to zero, do we consider a grounded compressor? Where do I put the dot on this scale? Between zero and ten thousand. So you said zero to ten thousand. So we got we got one here for ten thousand. Sure. Okay. Anybody else want to put a number on the board here? I think any, any type of resistance to ground is... I need a number, not just a name. So mega, what, what, what number mm -hmm. mega? I've got 50. One. One, one, million. one yes. yes. Okay. Everybody, everybody, anyone else have any suggestions they want to put on the board here? Uh, 1,000. 1,000 what? Kilo ohms, 1,000 ohms, 1,000 mega ohms. <laughs> Kilo ohms. That's past my scale. Kilo ohms. Okay, so 1,000 ohms. Sure. 10 ohms. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody want to take a guess as to what the range is for continuity on your average multimeter? I think it's two ohms. I would have said it's really high. I would have said, uh, I don't know, close to 50 mega ohms. 50 mega ohms? That's what continuity does? Our threshold on this scale is here. Anything below one mega ohm, according to Copeland, Daikin, Mitsubishi, whoever makes the compressor, anything from here down to there can be considered a grounded compressor or a failed compressor, electrically. Continuity on your average multimeter only reads from here. <laughs> Do you see the problem here? Mm -hmm. The resolution on continuity only reads between 0 and 50 ohms. Some multimeters it's 0 to 100 ohms, some multimeters it's 10 ohms or less. Continuity is designed for connecting Checking electrical circuits that are supposed to be connected, light switches, <laughs> contactors that are closed, from this side of the wire to this side of the wire, that's not supposed to be disconnected. That's what continuity is used for. Continuity, continuity is not used for checking grounded compressors. And why is that? Because we're looking at the scale with a microscope at the bottom. What do you think the range is for resistance? Well, I just showed you. It's the entire thing. So we're checking things that aren't supposed to be electrically connected, things that are, that are grounded, things that aren't supposed to be touching, the things that aren't supposed to have resistance in the circuit. We check with resistance, not continuity. 
Continuity is for electrical circuits that are supposed to be connected. This is for electrical circuits that are not supposed to be connected, or even if they are connected. But this gives you that range of resistance, either in auto or in manual selection, where you can see all of these things and know that if I'm, I'm this way of the scale, the compressor is good. If I'm this way of the scale, then the compressor is bad. Does everybody understand that? This is a common misconception that I got wrong for probably 70% of my career because we don't talk about it now. It all comes down to what type of multimeter you have. And with this $45 meter that I got on Amazon, I can troubleshoot just about anything in the field. So don't let your meters dictate the readings. Right? Let's make sure that we're using the right selections when we're condemning things, when we're looking at things like fan motors. Fan motors are just like compressors. They have windings. Right? Condenser fan motors, evaporator fan motors, it doesn't matter if it's three phase, single phase. Same thing with compressors. So just please keep that in mind when you guys are checking circuits, when you have boards like this that are popping fuses, right? Understand what we should be setting our meters to and where we should be checking these things. So there's another symbol. I was just wondering if you could yeah, explain yeah, that. The, arrows, the other one? The plus, yeah. My meter doesn't have it. It's actually it's oh. a selection, but. <laughs> It's forty five dollars. That's that's a that's a, that's, a, that's a whole other cost. You talking about that one? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Either one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, does anybody know uh, what this electrical symbol is? Have you ever seen it before? It's a diode. Does anybody know what a diode uh, does? Well, why do we have diodes in electrical circuits? One way, one way. It's an electrical check valve, right? So it only lets voltage travel in one direction. If it's positive, it can go through. If it's negative, it can't go through. It stops, it closes. We have a selection on our meter which allows us to, tech, to check diodes on systems. Essentially, our meters emit or create or whatever you want to call it, allow electrons to go from one connection actually on our negative lead to our positive lead that's measuring, right? It's trying to force that diode open or close. And so in certain electrical circuits like inverter boards, it's important to check diodes to understand that we're, we're setting our meters to diode check. One, there isn't high voltage applied because you will actually blow out your meter or blow the fuse on it. It's not made to have that. Uh, not made to have high voltage on the actual circuit when you are checking diodes with the diode function. But also that that the diode check is designed to force it open or force it closed to ensure that it's operating correctly. With inverter boards, we have uh, we have diode boards, right? The rectifiers they take AC voltage and they convert it to DC voltage, and the way they do that is by a series of diodes. And so the way we check that is we put a diode check. We check it one way, we got zero volts, right? OL. We check it the other way. I got 0.45 volts. The manufacturer says that's correct. That's because my meter is actually simulating electrical current through the actual circuit to say, this closes it, this opens it. If I check a service manual or if I understand the board well enough because I troubleshot it enough, I can say, well, wait a minute, it's letting current through when I do both of these. It's stuck open. Okay, okay. Or it's letting positive current through when it should not, it should, be, it should be the opposite, right? And I'm getting reverse readings. That's the purpose of that function there. And that's just because your meter is sending, let's say, 100 electrons down the circuit to check the valve or to open the, the, the diode, and then it's trying to read them as they come back. So if it only gets 50 back, it gives you a different reading. If it gets all 100 back, it's going to give you uh, that the reading it's supposed to have. So that's these functions here, guys. We could go on and on and on about this, and we will actually begin the training season. We'll actually start checking inverter boards, and you guys will be comfortable with selecting these and knowing when to use them and when not to use them. Um, we held a compressor class down in Miami. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we took two compressors that looked one of them looked good, the other one looked bad because we were checking with continuity. It turns out they were both bad. Um, put in resistance, um, and you found that, okay, it, this one is completely grounded. It was 10 ohms, and the other one was close to, uh, I think it was like 10,000 ohms or something like that. Um, you would have missed it if you went to a system to diagnose it and you were checking in continuity as opposed to resistance. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group.
Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.